Okay, this is a beautiful song by Keith and Christy Getty. There is a higher throne. Uh, we've uh, taught it to our church last Sunday and folks just loved it from the word go. It's a very singable song. And nowadays you get a lot of songs out of there that are moving and excellent, but they're not sing singable for a congregation. So I love it when I come across songs that are excellent as well but very singable and what i love about keith and christy getty's music is that it's typically they the original recording would be just about in the range of what a congregation can sing so the song i've just played um if you were to use my chord sheets uh, you can see the link below i've got my own custom color chord sheet it follows along you can use that sheet and play with uh, the original recording is exactly that. We use a band track, um, which helps us because we don't have a drummer, but so we add that fuller sound along with piano, bass and guitar and vocalist in church. But a lovely song. So I want to break down what I do in the song. You can play the song, it's in the key of E, and you can play it with your standard chords of E and A and B. Or some people play it like that and C sharp minor, F sharp minor, seventh, and so forth. You know, that's the standard chords. If you were to get a guitar book, that's the chords they're going to say um, how you play E, A, and so forth. But one of the things that I've learned over the years is to use the key of the song. And what I've been doing here, it's advanced, but it's not difficult. Actually, it's easier than playing the full bar chords all the time. Um, using inversions that's fitting to the key of E, um, I'm able to glide between chords. So inversion means I, I play in, like this is E, but I'm inverting the notes. I can play it in other places on the guitar, like here. This is also an E major. Uh, this is what we call a power chord because it's um, it'll go with with um, you know whether it's E or. E sus in that chord it's a powerful E sounding chord and it's especially good to use in the key of E so what I do I think how can I invert the notes so that I can use the open strings because in E I've got the two open strings below the E and the B string they open and the top E strings open so I try and keep them open even though I'm sliding up and down the more open strings I can use, the more uh, full and chorusy my guitar will sound. With the moment I add fingers and change, it can start to sound staccato-ish, you know, like start, stop, start, stop. And that's another way of playing as well, which, which can be excellently done. But I love using open chords. And open chords work in this way. You think, what key am I in? I'm in the key of E, and here is then how I would structure my inverted chord so for e the intro then e and then it's got a with the e bass so i'm using this power chord it just sounds full and beautiful and you'll see the picture here on the screen as well where you can see the fingering of it um, if you're not used to it get used to it because it's a super 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 cool chord to use and it's got a lot of uh, um, you no know, uses for it, not just for E, but in other places as well. Even my B chord is the same shape. I just glide it along like on a train track. So, but here's the E, and then for my intro, it says A, but it's got an E bass in it. So I'm going to just invert the chords, and I'm going to play this. And see how I change very few fingers. So I've got my fingers here, fingers 1, 3, and 4. 2 is resting. And I play that E chord. Now for the inverted A, I just drop finger one, one string down to the one, two, third string down, and then I lift away finger three as well. So finger four stays in place. So I've only got two fingers there on the guitar fret, but everything else is open. That's a full sounding A. Um, and because this is a slash E, meaning the E bass string, there it is, and the rest is A. Beautiful, isn't it? So you play E, the A, back to the E, and then the A again. Alright, so 
sorry, as the psalm was going, there is a higher throne, same thing, the E dropped down to the inverted A. Then I do B with an uh, E bass. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use, it's like the E shape here, but it's right up here at the eighth fret. That gives me B with the open E notes around it. Don't worry so much about understanding how all of this works. It'll come in time. Just You can even just memorize the chords because if you think of a that's a B bar chord but now I'm going to take my finger one I'm taking the bar away but I'm keeping the rest there and because I'm in the key of E the other notes that are now open they'll just harmonize they'll work and this then becomes my B but I, I use the I use the other fingers because they're stronger and easier to use uh, using my B uh, in the key of E, this is how I'm going to play beat. One, there's a lot of ways you can do it, but in this song, this is fitting because it's all I'm localizing my chord. So even if you just use for starters these three chords, E, A, and B, and learn to swivel between them. Swivel meaning keeping one finger in place while changing the others, um, or swiveling between chords. So there's my E to my A. Finger four stayed in place. Then back to the E, then to the A, now to the B. And it was just a short little movement for me to do that. And then next comes an E sus. So this time I want to have that full E suspended chord. So I'm going to go, as I'm here, I'm gliding finger two and three back. Now you can lift it up and put it down. I just typically would glide it back because then I know it's going to be in place. I just, like, there's my B chord. It's an e, sh e shape, but it's a B sound. Then fingers two and three. I lift one, two and three, stay on the strings, but I, I lift the pressure of the strings. I just kind of just touch it. And then I slide it back to the second fret. And I use my fourth finger to add the suspended E note. Then all this world has known and now I've got a glide there as well from the E sus to the B. So I've got E sus and now fingers three and four will just glide to the fourth fret and finger one's going to add the B bass note. Well, there's no, it says there D sharp bass. Um, I'm not, I'm choosing not to play that. I've got a bass guitar player who's going to take care of my bass notes. Sometimes I'll play it in, but in this shape, it's very hard to add a D sharp. So I'm going to let the bass player do it and I'm just going to have this open sounding chord. All the strings play all of them and you have a B sound, a full B sound. And now there's a lovely thing. That's the same shape as we used before for E. Remember when I said E, that shape? It's very versatile. Now, if I put it on the second fret, it's a B open chord. If I now put it on the fourth fret, it's a C sharp open chord. That one shape. Here's the E, here's the B, here's the C sharp. Lots of open strings. C sharp. With faithful ones from every tongue. And now it says A every tongue. But I've now, because I was um, in this shape, I'm choosing to take fingers three and four and slide them back to the second fret. It's, it's, it's um, half the A chord. So really, it technically is an A2 chord I'm using, but I'm replacing the typical A with this open A. Because in the key of E, it's always handy to open up those bottom two strings. So every time, and then for my F sharp minor, I'm, uh, the seventh, I'm going to use an open shape as well. And I'm just going to put finger two down on the F sharp note at the top and, and then let it ring down. I do touch this A note here. It's muted. Um, if you did it ring out in this key of the song, it'll be fine. It'll be fine to do. I'm just by habit used to muting it so that the F sharp is really... Uh, no, standing out more will one day come and then so that's a nice open F sharp minor seventh works in the key of E doesn't work always but in the key of E this open shape works and now see for the next one B sus to B how easy this is when I slide um, my fingers so I'm going to slide them so that I use B over here like when you do a bar chord so slide it to the um, ninth fret fingers uh, three and four so they were there for the F sharp, remember, now I lift up the top finger, slide those down to the 
the ninth fret and then I put down finger one on the B note it because of the angle it's automatically going to mute the second string but now I've got a B sus sound to B the A is muted automatically but I've got that sus to major sound and it just sounds beautiful so I'll just play them uh, in one go for the verse verse 2 is the same and now for the chorus part so after at the end of verse 2 um, salvation comes and then comes the chorus it's got E with the G sharp now you could just play this E and the bass player does the G sharp you could play E here bass player does the G sharp or you could use an inversion that is easy to use once you get used to it uh, it takes some getting used to, but I, I like to use the E over G sharp inversion. So I'm in B. Now I slide back, and all my fingers are going to kind of change position, but I'm used to it now. So there's my E with the G sharp. Some people play it this way, muting the A string. I'd like to play it this way. It just feels more comfortable for me. Uh, it takes a bit of getting used to it, but once you get used to it, it's a handy, handy, beautiful sounding open voicing to use. A string is muted, and I'm using finger one, uh, three, and four, and the bottom two are open, and as you can see on the diagram. Your heaven's voice is seen. And that's what's nice about using the previous chord, the E over G sharp like this. I now use an inversion for A by just taking that away and then strumming from the A down. It's an A inversion. So it replaces your typical A voice. It says that an A2, and this is this would be A2, and this is what I'm playing. It, you can't hear the difference. So it's this to the A2. And then I swivel to the B. See, I'm not moving much. But once you get your head around this concept, your guitar playing goes next level. This is like professional studio recording stuff. That's the stuff you hear on recordings um, when they use voicings like this. Now, of course, at the beginning, you use whatever you know, but then you start to do layers like this to just build out the song. So just again, E of a G sharp, your yeah, heavens voices sing, there's my A, then I swivel to the B, the thunderous anthems ring. So I want the E sus to the E, and then through emerald chords, that's C sharp minor, I've got to glide finger up from E, I lift up finger one and two, and finger three is going to glide to the sixth fret, and I put down that shape that I used for E, B, and C sharp. And in the beginning, you know, you kind of got to like think, oh, where is it? And where, what fret, what finger? But you repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. And then after a while, it becomes second nature. It's like playing a D. You tell me D chord, I can do D chord. Open C sharp, I can just go there. It just, it's automatic. And that's the place that you want to get to with music. And sometimes I'd say to guitarists that want to kind of push into this new way of using other voicings for chords, start with one of the chords. Like use... E, A, and B, but maybe your, you know, your C sharp use the open voicing. Start with one of them and replace the basic chord with the open voicing chord. And this song here has got lots of examples that you can use. And any song that's in the key of E, you could approach like this. Now you always want to uh, make sure it sounds good. Is this open voicing sound the sound you want for the song? But typically in the key of E, this should work. Um, generally speaking all right so just to play through uh, the chords of the uh, chorus quickly um, your heavens voices sing their thunderance anthem ring through emerald chords and sapphire skies their praises rise 
glory, wisdom, power, strength, thanks, and honor all to God our King who reigns on high forevermore. Forevermore. So it could do the B, so a B sus B to the E, or the B sus B to the E. Either way is fine. And then just quickly, if you were to do a little instrumental bridge, forever, and then you go to the more. Now I'm using the other E over G sharp to the A, A2 to the B. You might have picked up in the video the, the, when I play through first time, I actually did something else there. It's all, you know, you have options and sometimes I do it one way, sometimes another way. It's like a, it's dancing with your guitar. In the moment you go with what, what feels good and natural. So using the other uh, shapes I've got, so it goes F sharp minor and this time I want that traditional F sharp minor, the bar chord sound. E over G sharp. That's a bit of a cheating chord I did there. You could even use fingers three and four. Because what I did, I did A, B, but I, I mute. When I get to B, I'm, I press up and don't play this string and only play the four strings below. And that's the equivalent as if I was playing this. Now the bass guitar is going to play the B note for me, so I can get away with playing only the bottom notes. So from the A2, five strings down, to the B here, but now I'm going to be lazy and not play my B bass note. I play four strings down. Especially when it's like quick movements, then it's kind of handy, just you know, get it out of the way. A, here comes the B. And now, Going back into the chorus, fingers four is in place for that little inversion I've shown you before. So I hope that helps you. Here's another inversion I didn't use in the song, but it's it's an advanced one. Once you get used to it, lovely sound, very versatile to use. Um, it's all inversions of E, good old E chord. God bless you all. I hope this helps you.